Hey there, handling difficult people. Let's talk today about handling difficult people as part of our setup for success, pre-work to our next Get Up and Go Challenge. Get Up and Go Challenge, we're taking a little break from that. We'll start a new one October 1st, a new 30-day free Get Up and Go Challenge so that you always know what to do given any situation. Not just the difficult ones, but any challenge, any obstacle, any failure, anything that pops up in your life, guarantee you'll be better off after it happened than before it happened if you join us for the challenge and you learn something that I call the blowing on feathers soap framework and how you can use it to diffuse and handle anything that life dishes at you including things as big and as monumental as the COVID pandemic. I don't know about you but did anybody really think about or know the word pandemic prior to 2020 i know i certainly didn't i'm sure i've heard it i'm sure i've watched a movie on it or a, or a documentary on it but i never actually thought that in my lifetime i would personally have experience with it so handling difficult people what the heck are difficult people now i started i brainstormed a little list of what i consider difficult people things like control freaks egotistical maniacs entitled people um, teachers pet or popularity seekers uh, know-it-alls the professor we have a, a relative we call the professor people that know it all they know everything about everything no matter what you know and are an expert in they know more than you about any topic on the planet pessimists negative people rude mean angry arrogant um, disapproving prejudiced uh, judgmental uh, superiority complex people and now we're getting over the behaviors and we're we're, na we're adding names and, and things to things but I, I thought as I'm making this list of people that I consider difficult people or challenging people, it might be totally different than your list because the people that I find difficult tend to be the people that are either very different from me or, ah, newsflash, look in the mirror this time and I realize that they're a reflection of a piece of me, a component of me that I don't love and embrace and, and really want to show up as in the world give you an example of that uh, I talked about I think traffic and, and like I didn't really talk about road rage but road anger but that it was involved in traffic and why I needed to change my thoughts and feelings about traffic the other day but uh, so anger is one of those things I don't like when I fly off the handle and I get angry and I just like blow, I, I call it blowing a gasket uh, when I was little my family would I would blow a gasket and then I'd be fine like two minutes later, but I'd get upset about something, some injustice in my four-year-old or five-year-old world. And I would like, I don't even remember what I did. I don't know, but I would like explode or have a little fit or something. And my family started using the expression, pop the cork, pop the cork, Sherry, they would say. And so whenever I was likely to blow my stack or get upset about something they would say pop the cork and so I didn't like that right it was funny my family loved it and they thought it was wonderful and funny but I really didn't like it on the inside and so it did help me deal with my anger and not get angry because I didn't want anybody to say pop the cork to me so <clears throat> Anger was one of those emotions and feelings that I didn't want to feel. I never wanted to be mean to anybody, so I didn't like it when anybody was mean to anybody else. Probably because I didn't want them to be mean to me. So handling difficult people just became a, a natural part of, it's a natural part of growing up, but a natural part of my life and figuring out how to navigate my way in the world. Now sometimes we find people that have, are just different from us or have different opinions difficult. And are they really difficult or are they just different? There's nothing wrong with being different. Oh my God, embrace your differences. Embrace what makes you unique and special because that's what makes this world at all interesting. So it's, it's hard, but make sure you're asking yourself, am I upset about this person because of something in me that I am not acknowledging? We all are this huge mod podge of a, a an array of different feelings sometimes we feel angry sometimes we feel mean sometimes we just want to be like knock it off I don't want to deal with you right now sometimes we want to just be left alone about things so realize that we're all this jumble of of personality and of experiences and of feelings and emotions and sometimes those are come out will come out but they don't define us how we behave how we act how we respond in one given situation is not at all a clear representation of who we are so we need to remember that everybody that comes into our life every person we meet 
is in our life for a reason. They're either in our life to help us with something or to show us something maybe about ourselves that we don't want to see. I didn't want to see that I was a, a control freak and that I had to always have things my way when I was younger. Uh, and through a series of different experiences and with different people, I realized that I didn't like feeling like everything had to be my way or I was going to get frustrated and angry because I, I learned that it didn't have to be my way, that there's a, a lot of different ways of doing any task and accomplishing any goal or any objective than just the one way that I think of. That's really, again, egotistical to think that it's my way or the highway. Um, so really controlling people came into my life through uh, my boss, through my significant other, through some family members that were really, really controlling. And I hated that feeling of how they acted toward me by controlling and lording over me. And that was to show me that I was behaving that way in certain areas and aspects of my life and that I could open up and be different and be better as a, as a person. And I could be less difficult to those people I was interacting with. So we need to remember to realize that we're not seeing the whole picture. When we're having trouble with another person, you know, we don't all get along with everybody. We don't all like everybody and that's perfectly all right. We don't have to, unless we're in a situation like with a family member or a boss where we need to positively interact with that person. And I found that there's some, some things you can really do to, to make that go smoothly and to actually benefit from the situation. I had a really, really difficult boss early on in my corporate career. For some reason, she took an absolute dislike to me and she was very open about her disdain and dislike for me. And I'm thinking, I'm this nice person, I'm young and I have just gotten out of school and I'm really excited to be in this company, yada, yada, yada. <clears throat> and you know, even the, my coworkers would comment, my gosh, why is so-and-so on your case so bad? And I'm like, don't know, but here's what I'm gonna do. And I realized that I, I liked working for that company. I wanted to stay there. I was new in my career. I wasn't going to not succeed because of one other person. And so the, the first thing I did was I, I tried to find out what was going on with her. And then I looked at in the mirror, what was going on with me that would irritate her so much. And it turns out that right before I started working at the company, a couple things happened. Number one, she had actually had a nervous breakdown. And I, I didn't know anything about that, but she'd had a nervous breakdown and had been off work and had just come back uh, very soon prior to when I was hired. I was hired by her boss and she didn't like that because she didn't have any say in the decision of hiring me. And I guarantee if she had been involved in the decision, I would not have been working for that company. But her boss had hired me and really liked me. So it was a challenge for her because I was just the opposite of how she was feeling. She was coming out of a really difficult, personal, challenging time and situation in her life. And I was coming in guns blazing, ball busting, all excited about starting my career in this organization. So we just had the opposite type personality. What I ended up doing was focusing on what she was awesome at, what she was good at, what I, what I really respected and admired in her. And by focusing on those things, what she was good at, and it allowed me to, you know, de-emphasize the things that she was on me about, the things that you know had to do actually with me and my personality, not with, with the job I was doing. Um, and that made it possible for us to work together. We worked together for, I guess, a couple of years before I moved on to another company. And then later on in my career, um, as I was working for a totally different industry, totally different company, we ended up crossing paths again and we got along really, really well, which is really goes to show you that people come into your life for a reason and a season and a time to show you something. I needed to understand people better and to see that there was more to, to people than meets the eye. And that was a really good lesson learned for me. So realize that what's going on with a person that is difficult, maybe it's just there's something going on in their life that you know nothing about. Um, and realize that it might not have anything to do with you or very little to do with you, the way that people are responding to you. It might have you know, a whole lot more to do with them than it does with you. But you also have to be willing to look in the mirror and say, am I doing something irritating to that particular person? Because if I look at my list of difficult people, those are the type of things that bother me and irritate me. Other people that might not, they might not even, they might think, hey, those are my people. I, those are, those, I love those people. Those are my favorite people in the whole wide world. They don't bother me at all. They don't, they're not difficult in my definition of difficult. 
So realize it might not be about you. Understand that everybody is here to teach and show us something either about them and about the situation or about ourselves. Look for what you can learn. Look for what you can appreciate in the person. If you need to work with them and continue to be involved with that individual, or if you don't, there's ways to alleviate that too. Sometimes you just need to leave the situation. Sometimes the situation isn't right for you. Example, my personal relationship, my marriage. My ex-husband was an absolute positive control free. And I guess he was here to show me that I was being too controlling and not flexible enough as well. But at a point, I knew that I needed to leave that situation because the difficult person and our conflicts weren't going to be resolved by me separating the person, focusing on his strengths and using the strategies that had worked for me in the past. I knew that some things are not worth the emotional and the mental and the physical and all of the things that you need to put into them. Every, I'm not going to ever say everything is resolvable right in, in the way that we want. And it would have been really, really unhealthy for me to stay married. So as difficult a choice and decision as that was, it was the right thing for me. Sometimes we just got to get away from the people that we're not meant to be connected to. It's true of every aspect in every area of our life, our relationships, because we have relationships in every area of our life, right? Whether you're a student, whether you're a business owner, whether you're an employee, whether you're whatever you are, whatever you're doing in life, it almost always involves other people. And so we want to find other people that we click with and that we can work well with and that we can um, build on one another's strengths and you know substitute our weaknesses. So tomorrow I think we'll talk about handling difficult situations because we need to remember to separate people from the situations that we're in. Consider that um, what's really going on with people and that we might not know the whole picture. And so if we take that into account, if we treat people the way we want to be treated, we'll always end up just fine. But then we can't get mad if we treat people a certain way and they treat us that exact same way back, right? Because we are modeling for people what we expect. And when we get what we expect, we can't be mad that we get what we expect. All right, have an awesome day. Any questions about handling difficult people? Any stories that you have about how you successfully navigated and handled a difficult person would be really, really helpful. So share those in the comments below. That's it. Have an awesome day. And I'll be with you tomorrow with another. I think we'll, we'll talk about handling difficult situations uh, tomorrow and some specific steps that you can use whenever you're faced with a challenge or a difficult situation to ensure that you'll end up with the, the outcome that you want, not just what happens, right? All right, have a great day. Catch you tomorrow.